Broadcasting from the world headquarters of the National War Safety Institute. It's America's slip and fall guy, Russ Kenton. This is America's Slip and Fall Guy, Russ Kenzior. Thanks for listening to my podcast. You know, oftentimes I'm involved in uh, matters uh, where somebody will slip and fall in a bathtub, a shower, uh, either at home or at a hotel, and it usually comes down to uh, a couple of factors. Uh, The first is the floor uh, of the bathtub, or bathroom, I should say. How slippery was the bathroom floor? Was there... You know, is there anything on the floor, any type of bath mat, towel, whatever uh, might be used? And how slippery was the surface? Surprisingly, a lot of people put in floors that are just inappropriate for a bathroom. They're just way too slippery when wet. Uh, Another factor uh, that comes up a lot is grab bars, whether or not there's a grab bar uh, to hang on to, to hold on to as you're getting in and out of a a tub shower enclosure. Uh, A lot of people will be kind of straddling the bathtub as they're getting out, of course, barefoot, wet and uh, hit the floor or hit a, uh, a towel on the floor. A lot of, a lot of hotels will provide bath towels, uh, call them bath mats, but they're towels, and uh, both they and the towel go down. And, of course, thirdly is the surface of the, the bathtub or shower itself, the, the, the tub surface, the shower surface, uh, which is used uh, almost every day, assuming the rooms are full, and cleaned almost every day, will over time uh, build up a, a slippery film that needs to be removed Uh, If not, that tub becomes very, very slippery when wet. So you've got three pieces of the slip and fall pie uh, as it relates to bathtubs and showers and specifically to hotels and and, uh, lodging accommodations where these types of injuries are sadly all too common. Uh, Joining me today is Greg Wenthry from Safe Step. Welcome, Greg. Thank you. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about Safe Step and what you do. And, um, and how you could uh, help prevent bathroom or bathtub shower slips and falls. Tell, me, tell, tell us a little bit about your company. Sure. So Safe Step is a, a national organization with, with really two primary purposes to improve both the safety and the appearance of uh, the bathtub or the bathroom floor. Now, there's, there's some extensions to that, but that's our primary business is really making sure that, that uh, especially the bathtub, is is safe and looks good. How do you know a bathtub is safe? I mean, before somebody, of course, falls. Well, let's let's start with the appearance side of it. You know that that there are certain brand standards that Hilton or Marriott or these various flags they call them uh, have in uh, our stuff needs to look a certain way. It can't have sticky tape on the bottom, for example, um, to Hilton specification. Um, the safety side of it is something that really has to be done in, in more of a controlled or a measured type environment. You really have to understand. I, don't, I think you start at the end and then work backwards and go, what would define a, a, a safe? And, and, and safe is, the, is one of these words that you go, you know, is it always going to be safe? Well, no. There's many factors that might contribute to it. So we'll say less dangerous or, or uh, better uh, traction. Yeah, hazardous. Yes. And, and so you got to establish a, kind of what are the parameters that, that define that. And then you ensure that all the services, and we're a service organization, we provide either treatments or coatings on bathtubs that ensure that it will meet these safety standards or these safety objectives that um, both our organization and then the hotel owners and management companies have um, uh, to ensure their guests are safe. Well, needless to say, your customers have a problem. Uh, they know it. They reach out to you or others in your industry looking for some type of a solution to enhance the safety or uh, traction mm-hmm. of the bathtub or shower. Do you do b- bathtubs and showers? Yes. Okay, yep. so, and I, I know those oftentimes are different surfaces. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you can come out, provide a, a coating, a treatment, an etchant, whatever mm-hmm. it might be, for the appropriate appropriate product for the surface, uh, you enhance the, the performance of the uh, tub. And, how, and when you leave, how, how does your customer know that what you are leaving behind is actually a safer surface? Well, a couple different ways. The first thing you do is uh, we take measurements after we complete the treatments or the coatings. Um, there's other things that we do, though, to ensure that. First, you establish the set of guidelines. What What's the finished product supposed to be? Then you have established standard of um, uh, standard operating SOPs, we call them, stand, so that everybody does it the same way every single time. 
during that SOP process or during the installation process, there are certain points that we take measurements to ensure the paint is thick enough or the anti-slip aggregate is, is appropriate, mixed the right way, or a certain aggressiveness, either not, can't be too aggressive, can't be not, not aggressive enough. Right. So there's a variety of ways that we do that, and things that we do that ensure the finished product is going to accomplish those goals. Now, you obviously are working on a lot of different types of surfaces manufactured by a range of manufacturers. Yes. Uh, just in your experience, you find um, you know, certain types of tubs or surfaces present a higher risk than others? I mean, you have porcelain tubs, you have yeah. fiberglass. What, what do you see out there? Yeah, um, there's two main types of tubs out there. Uh, first, it's cast iron. Cast mm -hmm. iron typically have what you call a traditional porcelain surface. They're fired, they're fired really hot. That makes essentially like a glass coating on the top of it. Um, I think of Kohler. Kohler is one of the largest producers of, of cast iron porcelain tubs. Um, they will have an etched um, uh, etch patterns on the bottom that and uh, that deliver a certain coefficient of friction. Um, those tubs tend to be really robust, tend to last a long time, and are quite suitable for what we call treatments, where we're going to do, uh, you know, for our audience, a, a deep clean and an etch, a chemical etch of some yeah. sort, in order to uh, get the uh, coefficient of friction, which is kind of how the, the traction of a tub, to get it up to uh, to at least the OEM standard, but then also to make sure that it meets what the safety goals are, in particular, uh, what NFSI is doing with uh, uh, defining what anti-slip or traction parameters would right. be. And I know when you say the word, and <laughs> everybody hesitates, etch, that's a scary word. Uh, but really what you're doing, and I've got a little bit of experience in that because my first company, Traction Plus, we manufactured etchings for tubs. It's a scary term, but really you're deep cleaning. It's a microscopic yes. etch. When when you talk to a customer That's about right. etching, they get scared. You're going to ruin yeah. my tub. No. You know, they're very hesitant. But really what you're doing is just kind of restoring the tub surface yeah. back to its original. And, and what do you, I mean, what's going on? Tell, tell my audience or tell the audience you know, what, what you're getting off that tub. What, what, are, what are these films, minerals? What, what, what are you etching off? What are you cleaning yeah. off? If you think of a hotel bathtub and how many times that bathtub is used and how many times that bathtub is is washed it's dramatically higher than your consumer your home i mean they're getting washed every single day uh they're used virtually every day there's a there's a lot of we call it mileage there's a lot of mileage on these tubs <laughs> well w with that mileage comes certain things that can impede the the uh the traction of it uh in particular it can be soap um skin um, uh, hair products, things that after periods of time uh, will collect in the, in, the etch, in the etching, the thing that's designed to give you some traction, and they'll collect in there uh, kind of like it, it covers it up. And in order to get it back to being open enough so that, it's, that it can grip your foot, uh, you have to get all that stuff out of there. And it can be, it can be a trick, frankly, to, 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 get that, to get it out. Yeah, it takes a while for that buildup or what yeah. we call polymerized films. Mm -hmm. Uh, to build up. So it, it, it's something that is kind of gradual. It's oftentimes uh, even hard to see. I mean, a lot of those films are clean yeah, looking. Right. So the tub looks clean, but it's not yeah. uh, necessarily safe or slip resistant right. uh, when wet. And of course, people are slipping on wet tubs, not dry tubs. That's right. And uh, do you find any particular uh, customer of yours to, uh, that has more of one type of tub versus another? Uh, well, it? yeah. So the, you asked the question, what types of tubs are there? So first one is a cast iron. We talked about that a little bit. The second one is called a steel tub. A steel tub is essentially a, um, a piece of thicker sheet metal that goes through a press and gets pushed out. So it's like you're, you're forming it from a means of a high-pressure press. Um, it tends to be a, a less expensive tub. You know, these big, heavy cast iron tubs, they'll last 30 years. Uh, steel tubs, uh, at least the initial cost, is considerably less, uh, but the quality is also less. And the, the surface that goes on there, while everybody will, will say, well, it's an enamel this and porcelain that, in, in fact, it's really, it's a combination of uh, paint and uh, hmm. epoxies that can be fired on. So it can be a pretty hard, tough, good-looking surface. But in general, uh, steel tubs are considerably more slippery right out of the gate, right after installation, than, than cast iron tubs. Um, those typically warrant, rather than a treatment or this deep clean treatment that we spoke about uh, before, uh, are best suited for a coating. And a coating will actually add an aggregate. And, and for our audience, an aggregate is, uh, think of it as very fine sand, or it can be a variety of different materials, but it, it's bumps. 
uh, those bumps are going to be put onto the bottom of the tub in a very controlled fashion so that you're always delivering the same attraction, coefficient of friction, uh, every single time. We'll add that to the bottom and then essentially paint the tub. And we can either just paint the bottom or we can paint the entire tub. doesn't really matter. It kind of depends on what's to wear on the rest of the tub. Um, but from a safety standpoint, we're going to add an aggregate to the bottom in order to ensure that it meets really the safety parameters as defined by right. uh, ANSI. Um, you know, I assume you prep the tub, come in, apply some type of a coating of spray yep. paint. Do you spray them? Do you paint them? How do you paint them? Yeah, the, uh, the aggregate is actually put on in a, in a controlled, so it's a very a particular um, mixture of aggregate to, in this case, it's a primer. That gets rolled on. We then test to make sure that it meets a certain thickness. Uh, it's done in a template, so it's got this uh, kind of like a diamond pattern. If you've mm. seen other tubs, like, a, like the Kohler tub, uh, you'll see... Uh, Oh, kind of a design that goes with the edge pattern to make it complement. So rather than look like you just took a bunch of sand and broadcast it or spread it out like you're sowing seeds or something on the bottom, it's it's more done in a professional complementing uh, complementing the the look of right. of the organization. There's got to be a sweet spot there, right? You can't have too rough of a surface because no, right. then it collects dirt or bugs your feet. Bugs your feet and it looks terrible, yeah. hard to clean. Mm -hmm. So there's kind of this zone of mm, yeah. just enough aggregate to yeah. prevent slippage, but not too much to create a that's a visual uh, change in visual appearance or, or cleaning. So that's kind of the chemistry, if you will, the technology yeah. that your company has. Yeah, and 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 over the years we have refined that to to really understand what should the right ratio be. Again, starting with the endpoint, to make sure that you meet this endpoint, you then got to back up and create processes to, to deliver that endpoint. And that's exactly what we're doing. It's, right. a, it's a very controlled process. You, and of course, there's fiberglass tubs, right? The, the plastic, what yeah. people refer to. And they're we, different. We don't do much of those. We can do some deep clean. The, the, the trick with uh, fiberglass is... Uh, it is very resistant to uh, acid. In fact, uh, when they ship uh, acids, they typically do them in, in, in plastic-type containers. Uh, for, our, for, for the sake of argument, let's just say fiberglass is very similar, so very resistant to it. So that leaves you with not too many options left. Uh, you, can, you could put a paint on. The trick of putting a paint on, though, is it chemically reacts with, they call it the gel coat, the top coat, uh, so if you put that on, it's kind of a one-way street. It's not going to come off again. And, and paint like any surface is going to wear. And if you can't get it back off, I've now put this, this uh, fiberglass tub kind of in its uh, uh, – the, time, the, the timer's ticking. You know, right. Eventually, you're going to have to take it out. Right. So um, we typically focus on uh, – in, in hospitality, there's kind of classes of hotels. So upper mid-scale and up. That's where you're going to see steel and cast iron tubs. As you look down market – you're going to find more of the fiberglass, which is considerably less expensive. They buy them in one-piece units. It's it's not the message or the brand. Hilton, for example, that's not one of their their uh, right. uh, criteria parameters. They won't let you do right. that. How about cleaning? Ongoing cleaning. You you come out, um, treat a tub, safety treat a tub. Uh, the hotel goes back to the regular maintenance procedures. How do, or do they have a specialized cleaning protocol? Well, but yeah, I mean, we know that what we deliver is going to meet certain safety specifications. But we also know that in order for those to be maintained, the housekeeping team uh, and sometimes the engineering team need to be uh, quite informed as what they should or shouldn't do. So we have what we call in-servicing or an education. Uh, we work with Ecolab and Diversity to make sure that, uh, and those are the most common mm -hmm. products that are used uh, in hospitality, to make sure that they're using uh, products that have been tested by us and by them. So we'll call it approved cleaners and then approved processes. And uh, we, work, we work quite a bit with housekeeping to say, here's how to do it. Here's how not to do it. Here's what you should use. Here's what you shouldn't use. Um, it's, it's always a tricky thing for a, a provider of services like ours to, th those guys don't work for me, you know? So, right. so I, we do the best we can to kind of educate and get them involved. I think there's some, we're actually working on a few things right now to make that easier. These little things that might hang on a cart or videos, um, uh, even contemplating a, a certification process for housekeeping so that they understand implications of, of safety and of durability. Uh, when you put a paint down, uh, you can't use a scrub-free product or, you know, your spick and spans. You know, right. Think of that stuff. You, if, if you wouldn't wash your car with it, you know, yeah. which you wouldn't, you know, because you'd 
you'd scratch the heck out of it and eventually wear through right. it. It's the same kind of thing for a, for a coating for our customers. Well, you mentioned education. That's a key part. And one of the things is you start with educating yourself. I mean, you're a, you've attended the walkway auditor mm -hmm. uh, certificate holder course from NFSI and, uh, uh, and others from your company. Yep. And uh, so, you know, educating yourself, bringing that information to your customers really makes you an authority, much more of an authority than, than they may uh, have knowledge of. Yep. Uh, you know, housekeepers know how to clean, mm -hmm. but they're not safety experts. Right. And uh, folks that are selling cleaning products uh, are also, you know, authorities in cleaning. But, you know, safety and cleaning is, is not the same thing. I mean, you, you're seeing that. You're, you're in that middle ground. Mm -hmm. You're having to bring a safety solution to a product that ultimately may be uh, affected by improper cleaning or improper use. Mm -hmm. And so you're kind of in the middle of that. So you, you spend, I assume, a lot of your time we teaching? Mm -hmm. yep. you, yeah. Uh, part of what we do, in fact, you know, one of the reasons I, I came to this, so we've had previous uh, safe step um, operations people, quality control people come to um, this training and uh, get the certification through NFSI uh, in the past. The reason I came is uh, uh, my job is both essentially running the organization from a sales and operations standpoint. I want to personally make sure that I know what's going on so that our endpoint, and ultimately people are going to look to me to make sure that, okay, this stuff is working, uh, to make sure that we're really delivering that. Uh, I felt that it was important that I understood as much as anybody uh, uh, can understand, at least become very, very familiar with what the safety specifications are, how is ANSI deriving these, what, if is, if, uh, what are the other organizations doing, so that I essentially can be a good consultant and help our customers understand um, fact from fiction and uh, understand what the goal line really should be, understand the impact to their particular business, so that uh, should our solutions be one of the potential uh, options for them, and hopefully it is, but it doesn't have to be, that we present ourselves in a way that understands the true problem and can make really solid, informed decisions and recommendations to our customers. Right. I mean, it's a serious problem. Um, every hotel uh, knows that slips and falls, regardless of bathroom, bathtub, uh, you know, vestibules are, are a problem, and it's not a secret. Um, and most want to fix it. They, yeah. they don't want people getting hurt. Yeah. I mean, this isn't, uh, you know, the motivation of any buddy in the hospitality industry, but sadly, they don't oftentimes know what to do. Yeah. For example, they'll, they'll buy a, a bathtub. You mentioned Kohler, Standard, other yeah. manufacturers, and they, they put the tub in. It works pretty well for a while at first, yeah. but because of, as you put it, mileage, yeah. lots of mileage, lots of footsteps, the, the, the slip resistance changes. It, it degrades right. over time. Mm -hmm. They then look towards their chemical provider um, you know, who's selling them cleaning products, and, and uh, you know, the products are cleaning, but they're not enhancing, improving the safety. Yep. which they don't oftentimes know until somebody gets hurt. Right. They slip and fall, and they, they, they become injured and file a claim and, God forbid, a lawsuit. But that's the reality. That's the industry, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the hospitality industry's uh, risk mm -hmm. that they assume. Um, and I see it on the back end. As, mm -hmm. a, as an expert witness, I'm the guy that's brought in after the effect, or after, you know, after the, the, the fall. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's this kind of, you know, cycle. And so it's good to know people like you are out there on the front lines, really creating solutions, providing, uh, you know, a remedy, and that you're educating your customers uh, because that's really, I think, the first step is they don't really know what's going on or how to fix it. And, again, you don't need to – stop me if I'm wrong. You don't, you don't need to rip the tub out to fix the problem. No. no. I mean, you can work with the surface that, mm -hmm. that's in there today. And, and how long does your products generally last? How, what's performance? Uh, well, that's another tricky one. It's a little bit how, like how long do your tires last? Yeah. Kind of depends on how you drive, depends on how many miles you put on, uh, a bunch of different things. In general, you look to treatments to, in all likelihood, be redone uh, every two to three years, somewhere in there. Um, uh, coatings, uh, so especially the bottom coating is going to be, we, now we give a three-year warranty, primarily it's around durability, uh, but in general we see those replaced at about the, the four-year mark uh, to six-year. Uh, again, there's a lot of variables that right. go into how long something is going to last. Right. And, and you, uh, tell the audience a little bit about the size of your company. Are you national, regional, local? Oh. Uh, we're, we're national. Uh, there's roughly 75 people or so at the company. Uh, been in business for about 18 years. Uh, the founder started this actually 
uh, because his daughter slipped on a pool deck mm. and he wanted to try and find a solution to try and uh, improve that so that other, other parents like him, dads like him, don't have to go through the, the, the pain of, uh, of watching their daughter uh, suffer because of it. Well, you, it raises another question. Does, do you have products for other types of surfaces, yeah. pool decks, floors? Yeah, yeah we're, we're really kind of the wet, call it the wet surface specialist. Now, most of the wet surfaces, and, and we're very specialized in the, in the hospitality. We do some other verticals, some retail, a couple other things, but our sweet spot is really hospitality. Right. So we, we provide services to hotel owners and operating companies, management are, companies. Are you doing any testing? You, you testing surfaces? Oh, you sure. performing any type of a consulting time. surfaces? All the or time. consulting? Yeah. Uh, from a new product standpoint, we're always looking for, uh, for example, you heard me talk about fiberglass tubs. Right now, I, I don't have a great solution for it. Uh, I am evaluating some, uh, some different coatings that could be stripped, so could be removed in the future, so that I don't have to tell the poor guy that's got a bunch of fiberglass tubs, nah, there's nothing I can do for you. Right. Rip them out and put something else in. So yeah, we do that. Um, uh, we also, of course, are, are regularly testing our quality control, managing our quality control, watching warranty, trying to determine what if a warranty, you know, why that came up. There's a variety of things that we're doing. Um, and the final point that we're doing is we do offer a service to our, our customers where we can do walkway assessments. So part of the, uh, part of the other reason that we're here, so our organization um, can provide a service that can essentially say, is, is this property in compliance with the most current ANSI uh, and NFSI recommended safety standards? Gotcha. So that's the consulting arm. Yeah. Uh, we've been speaking with Greg uh, Wenthree from, uh, is it Wenthree or Wenthee? Wenthee. I'm sorry. That's okay. From Safe Step. And uh, how can folks get a hold of you if they want to reach you? Uh, you know, probably the easiest way is to go to our website. I could give a phone number, but safestep.com. It's, okay. it's one word, S-A-F-E-S-T-E-P.com. And from there, you can dial general number and you can absolutely get a hold of me there. Good. So you do you do residential work or just commercial? Just commercial. Just commercial. So yeah. it's really hotels, hospitality. Yep. That's our sweet spot. Uh, they're, they're, I mean, if, if you have listeners that are not in hospitality, right. uh, a couple of the areas that we're looking at, the other verticals that we're looking at would be healthcare. Um, uh, uh, timeshare, uh, rental property. So there's some other areas that we, we look at, but for sure our sweet spot. We got a, we got a dominant position in, right. in hospitality. I appreciate you coming out, uh, talking about a uh, subject matter that sadly is really widely unknown mm -hmm. by many, not only in the industries you serve, but just in general. Uh, people think that, you know, you slip and fall in the bathtub. Well, come on. I mean, you're, it's wet. Uh, it's going to be slippery. Well, the fact is it doesn't have to be slippery, right? I mean, you can actually make tubs safe even when wet, even when using shampoo or any type of, you know, chemicals. And, and that, you know, you don't have to accept an unsafe condition in a bathtub or shower uh, because there are solutions. And you, I guess, have 18 years of experience doing that. We do. Right? Yeah, so. we do. So thanks for having me, Russ. Appreciate no, it. No, appreciate it. And uh, this has been America's Slip and Fall Guy, Russ Kenzior. Again, thanking you for listening to my podcast. And uh, remember... Don't let your next step be your last step. Until then, take care.